your faith journey started with the new birth if you are a believer if you are born again that's how your faith journey started okay men call them christians all right no remember that it wasn't christ that called us christians it wasn't god we are called children of god <laughs> all right god calls us his children but men called them christians because they were replicating christ in everything the way they were behaving in in nature in power in conduct everything and people looked at them in antioch and said wow these people are just like the christ they talk about these people are like the anointed ones they talk about all right so the early church was not a church void of power was not a church void of the influence of the holy spirit they were so impactful that the world knew it the world knew it you see let me say this to us children of god like you see a demon possessed maniac manifesting the madman of gathering for example and people could see the manifestations that is how it is with the spirit when you're possessed with the holy spirit you are under an influence all right it's not as if you're going everywhere shouting and yelling and creating disorder no but people will see the fruits you're bearing and they will know that there's something in you that is different from what is in them all right so let's go on why the new birth why the new birth this walk this spirit walk we're talking about starts from there if you are not born again you can never walk in the holy ghost you can never operate the holy ghost you can't all right so you must be born again before you can be qualified yes i'm choosing that word carefully before you can be qualified to be a carrier of the Spirit of God. So, when you get born again, your physical body did not change. When you get born again, in fact, many of the physical problems you have did not go. So what happened? What happened is very simple. And we're going to break it down shortly. What happened is that it's your spirit man. All right? That was made alive. You now have a recreated human spirit. How did man get there? How did man get to that state of spiritual dryness and death? We're going to look at it in the scriptures. But before we go on, I want to read to us John chapter 3. When this leader came to Jesus by night, Jesus made some utterances or said some words. In verse 3, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I said something to us last week, if I remember, if you can remember, that there is no kingdom without the Holy Spirit. Are you getting it? And Jesus Christ taught us this in John. He said that the world cannot receive him. All right? He said, but you will receive him. He will be with you and will be in you. All right? So Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. He cannot experience the kingdom of God. He cannot adopt God's way of doing things. He cannot. It's not possible. Now, in verse 5, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> see the kingdom? Enter the kingdom? When you see something, it's different from when you experience it. To see it, if I will explain it in my own words, is to recognize it to discern it to enter it is to experience it so i want you to take note of that he said that which is born of the flesh we quoted that earlier is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit do not marvel that i said to you you must be born again 
You know, some preachers don't like using that word anymore. They want to use something else. You can't change it. <laughs> All right? Because it summarizes the experience that Christ is talking about. Because your spirit man was eternally, spiritually separated from God. Death has taken over. But now he's saying you must be born again. All right? It's not talking about you coming out of your mother's womb again. No. That's not what he's talking about. And we'll read that story later. Now, to understand the real birth, which is spiritual, you need to understand the real death. I'll repeat myself. To understand the real birth, which is spiritual, you need to understand the real death. All right? A lot of people exist, but they are not living. And you will understand what I mean shortly. So if you read Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, you see the accounts of God creating things and creating man and um, the account of how Eve was deceived and he ate the for she ate the forbidden fruit. We call it forbidden fruit because according to God's commandment, God said, you can eat of every other trees in the garden, but not this one. And God is generous. I mean, God gave them many trees to eat from, but not that one. In fact, in the garden was the tree of, the, of, of, of life. Can you see how terrible the devil is? He didn't tell them, eat of the tree of life. He said, eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Eat of it, because he knows that. Let me tell you, when the devil deceives you into accepting any gifts or anything from him, it's because what you are losing is far more greater than what he is giving you. That is what he does. All right? The devil has changed people's purpose, people's destinies. All right? Through that. You know, we, that's not what we're talking about here, but let's look at the scripture. So, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. We need to understand the real death. <laughs> All right? When we understand the real death, it will help us to understand the real life. Now, then the Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. I want you to say the breath of life. The breath of life. Okay, because when you just say he breathed into man's nostril, it's not complete. There's a certain component of God that God added. All right, he didn't just breathe into man's nose, he breathed the breath of life into man's nose. Then man became a living creature. Now, to think of just this in terms of living creatures like dogs, bulls, and other things would be to walk in ignorance. All right, because those things don't have spirits. All right, their spirits they end here. Their spirits are not they, no, not their spirit. Their unseen man or nature is not eternal in nature. Only man has that ability. In any the man that exists materially, me, you, every one of us, are the ones that have the eternal side to deal with. If a goat dies now, the goat has died. Are you listening to me? So don't bow to all those nonsense. Some people worship goats. They spread all sorts of philosophies that when men die after some years, they'll come as cow, or come as goat, or come as rats, and all those nonsense. All right? It's ignorance. It's all fables, according to what um, the apostle instructed us, that we should avoid all those fables. Now, this is the truth. Every creation, read Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Every creation that God made, it was only man he formed with his hand. So, by nature, God rubbed off on us. One. Two, it was only man he breathed into. Take note of that. So, 
man became a living soul. Because what God did was, God said, let us make a man in our own image and our likeness. In our own image and our likeness. And um, I remember a, a, a preacher once shared this, it blessed me, that that image is not talking about your physical image. No. To view that imagery like that is to be carnally minded. God is a spirit. All right? That image was the spirit man that God made to walk in this physical body. And I love that. Now, so, the real death. The real death is that separation that happened between God and man. God and man. There was that separation. The Bible says that they were naked. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. Look at it. If you read from verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took off its fruits and ate and she also gave some to her husband. Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 now. Verse, uh, verse 6 to read it. Who was with her and he ate. Verse 7, then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Can you see that? The eyes of both were opened and they knew immediately that they were naked. Better explained, what happened was that they were existing covered by the glory of God. What happened was that the glory of God left them and they became naked. They became vulnerable. They were reduced from divinity to earthly existence. And that is similar to even a believer, all right, that allows himself to be separated from the Holy Spirit. You become naked. You become vulnerable. Right, like God said about the serpent that dust will be its food, then the devil will start playing around you and toying with everything that concerns you. You come under the oppression of the devil. So they became naked, they became vulnerable. Adam and Eve were separated spiritually from God. All right, they were separated from God. That glory of God that draws them to God and makes them to desire more of God was removed because of sin, that rebellion against God. And when that happened, if you read further, Adam hid himself in the garden. You see, that thing that makes you to hide from God is dangerous. It's dangerous and every believer under the sound of my voice should take their relationship with God very seriously and avoid anything that will cause separation. All right? You don't want to be separated from him any time, any minute. If you have been, repent quickly and get back into his presence. Are you getting it? The Bible says, if we say we have not sinned, we lie, the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right? Just keep going back to him. All right? And let him mold and make you. So the covering was removed. And so, they became exposed. They became naked. The absence of God's Spirit causes nakedness. Are you listening to me? The absence of God's Spirit causes vulnerability. And that is why God cannot afford that the new creation should be without covering. Are you listening to me, guys? The new creation, you and me, God cannot afford you to be without that Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ said, He will what? Be with you and will what? Be in you. Reason is because He wants you to conform to your status. Alright? Your new status in Him. Divinity. He wants, the Holy Spirit is the one that ensures compliance. Hallelujah. 
We trust that this broadcast has been a blessing to you today. We invite you to stay in touch with us and be current with what is happening in Revaya Ministries. To visit our website, www.reviaministries.org and to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Revaya Assembly. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Wealthy Place TV, to get more spiritual edification. Thank you for tuning in today. God bless you.